This time on Brand Breakdowns, we're going to take a deep look at Pop War, talk about their life, their death, and their return. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, the channel where you can learn something new about skateboarding three times a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we take a look at something in the skateboarding world, from culture to tricks to your favorite brands to your favorite pros. Today on Brand Breakdowns, we're taking a look at Pop War. I have talked about them a little bit before. That was before I had this Brand Breakdowns format, and I wanted to do them a little bit more justice than that quick overview that I did before. So let's get into Pop War, but to understand where Pop War came from, we actually have to take a quick look at New Deal. So New Deal came out around 1990 or so. Around the turn of the century, they were starting to run out of steam. Their sales weren't doing so great. In 2002, they came out with Seven Year Glitch, their last video, and apparently it didn't give them the shot in the arm that they were hoping for because they went out of business right around that time. Um, I can't tell you exactly when. There's a Transworld News article that says both summer 2002 and also October, um, which doesn't make any sense. I'm leaning more towards summer because Pop War actually came out in 2002 and there are a couple steps in between. So I'm assuming it was summer or earlier, uh, but that was New Deal. And why did they go out of business? I think it may have been the cartoony graphics and stuff they were doing at the time. But Dave Smith, the team manager at the time, says it definitely wasn't the team. And here's a quote from him. It was more because kids didn't like the name. The name New Deal was holding some of the writers back, though it was a company with a history. Kids know New Deal, but just wouldn't buy it. I don't know why. I never understood it. So New Deal wasn't as exciting and new as some of the other brands that were coming out at the time. And so they were starting to lose some of their market share. But what Giant Distribution, the owner company, wanted to do was take the same team, restructure, come up with a new brand, and relaunch everything. And so they wanted to keep their current team, which was Chad Barty, Ricky Oyola, Lincoln Ueda, Fabrizio Santos, and Ryan Johnson. But those guys didn't actually make the switch. Most of them ended up on completely different teams altogether. But someone who did make the switch was Carol Foster, one of the big names behind Pop War. He had actually wanted to start his own company for a little while. After four years on Real, he was starting to talk to Deluxe Distribution and talking about starting a brand with them. They had just launched a few brands at this time. Timing wasn't quite right, and he ended up doing it through Giant. I was friends with Kenny Reed, and he mentioned Steve Douglas and Bob Boyle at Giant as a potential option. I spoke with them and originally started it as Populist before it morphed into Pop War. It wasn't solely my company though, not that I invested money in it necessarily, but I was definitely a shareholder. So this new project started as Populous, and I don't think Populous ever actually released a deck, they're only around for a couple months, but supposedly Kenny Reed is skating a Populous deck for at least some of his part in Static 2. I don't know for sure if that's the case, you can't really pause and look because the video quality was so bad back then, um, but that may be the only real look at what a populist deck would have been like because after a couple months they decided to start over they decided to refocus and try to commit to a more solid brand and that is a very good idea if you watch my video on seek skateboards right here you'll see that was one of the major problems that they had they didn't have a solid idea of who they were and who they were marketing to and they ended up getting lost in the shuffle watch that video for full details on that so it was definitely a good move for them to restructure and so they tapped Yogi Proctor, who had worked at Tumietto, Transworld Snowboarding, and Soul Technology as a graphic designer, and he was down to work on some concepts with them. And so they came up with Pop War. But what does Pop War mean? Listen to this quote and see if you get anything out of it. It's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek war on popular culture. It's like a contradiction in terms. This thing called street or urban culture is a huge commodity, and as with skating, it lingers around the forefront somewhere. Pop War is new and it's still forming. It's a vehicle for these messages, but the messages themselves are still forming. It's a fun project. Vague statements represent broader stuff. That's kind of what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I got nothing out of that quote. I have no idea what he's talking about. I think what they actually did was they just started with the word pop. They wanted to talk about how their boards had pop, shorties was bragging about pop, skaters would debate which brand decks had the best pop, and they wanted the word pop in their name and everything came later. The theory on forums back in the day was that it was just raw pop backwards, and that may be what it was. Maybe they started with Pop War directly, but I'm sure that all this stuff about the war on popular culture uh, was just 
they came up with that layer to try to explain what the name was supposed to mean. Um, it seems kind of ridiculous. But they started to come out with decks around 2002. They had pro models for Carol Foster, of course, and Kenny Reed. They also had Rob Gonzalez and Chad Tim Tim. This was the core team throughout the life of the company. They did have some AMs and other things as they went on, but these guys are what are most linked to the Pop War name. The graphics they came up with were really good. They used these bright saturated colors, a lot of flat graphics and iconography, stuff that would become more popular as time went on. You know, now every app has an icon that looks a lot like a Pop War graphic. But at the time, this was very new and very unique. You always knew you were looking at a Pop War board if you saw a new one because they had such a strong style. And that was a really good move. But take a look at these early graphics. They have all these rundown cars stacked up. They have a businessman in a suit with a dollar sign next to him. I think that this kind of gives an idea of what the war on popular culture is supposed to mean. I think there's some kind of anti-consumerism messages in there, which is a weird thing to put on a disposable product. But uh, that kind of stuff faded away over time. As the years went by, their graphics kept the same style, the same graphic language, but they didn't really have those sorts of messages. It was just different styles of graphics. In 2003, they came out with their Drops Technical Series. You can see an ad that they publish here. They don't really talk about what it is other than that it's lighter and it has more pop. But what they actually did is they had a fiberglass insert that they would put in the board, very similar to what we have now with a lot of different brands, but they only put it on the back truck. But this was still a pretty new idea. And looking back on old reviews from the time, people really liked these. And they also had the Slick Drop series, which is exactly what you think it is. And Pop War was also making wheels. These were pretty popular too. Their formula was pretty well regarded. When they went out of business, people were trying to figure out what other brands used that formula because they liked it so much. So they had a really strong team. They had really strong branding and graphic design. They had really good, interesting products with unique technology. What was missing? Well, they had to do a skate video and they were working on one. They actually released a little teaser DVD. You can find it online pretty easily now. And this was from 2004. And they were going on tours, they were doing all kinds of stuff and clearly working on a video. This video never came out. And it's kind of hard to understand why because they were still in business for a couple more years. And we'll get to that in a minute because there may be a little hint in what happens later. So Pop War was doing really well, but Giant Distribution was not. In 2005, they were going through some really big changes. They were apparently sold. They hired a new VP of marketing, Anthony Froud, who came from Volcom. And pretty much right away, they canceled their program for selling clothing for all of their brands. This is from a news article at the time. Giant Skateboard Distribution announced today a refocus on traditional skateboard products for the brands it distributes. Giant Skateboard Distribution launched cut and sew clothing lines from each of the current brands in 2004. With a turn in the skate market, the clothing brands did not end up being as successful as hoped. With this said, Giant has canceled the cut and sew program going forward, along with the outside road rep sales force. So Giant reshuffled, they went through some changes, and for the time being, Pop War was okay. But their sister brand, Stereo, was not okay. So Stereo had always considered itself more of a lifestyle brand. They had more with clothing and other types of products around skateboarding rather than just focusing on decks. And when Giant decided that they weren't gonna be doing clothing anymore, it started some problems. And I don't know exactly how it went down, but after about a year, Stereo left or they were kicked off, I don't know exactly. Both companies, Giant and Stereo, released press releases about this going on and it's interesting to compare uh, how they talk about it. So this is from Giant. Currently, Giant and Stereo have different objectives. Stereo has redefined their business model and is branching out as more of a lifestyle brand. Stereo will always make boards and will always be rooted in skateboarding. However, it's time for them to explore more areas as the design and lifestyle brand that Stereo has always been. We wish Stereo the best of luck in their future adventures. And that sounds very polite, very fair, almost like they have an actual PR team working for them, but the stereo release is kind of funny. It's riddled with typos, but I wanted to read this one part for you. Our brand represents individuality and not following industry standards. We use this same approach with business and we feel it's time for stereo to expand into the lifestyle skateboard brand it was meant to be. This will also allow our team to put their focus back on what got them into skating in the first place, having fun. 
If you love both skateboarding and art design, then let's face it, you're probably not 10 years old. We have looked at the skate market and felt it was time to evolve. Instead of Stereo trying to cash in by marketing only to the 10 to 15 year old demographic, which seems to be the direction of many of our corporate counterparts, by dumbing down our product and marketing, we are reworking the brand for the educated Stereo consumer. In short, we are choosing creativity over cash. I thought that was kind of funny. Giant wishes them well on their new adventures. And Stereo puts out this passive aggressive press release directly calling them out. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. And it gives you a little insight on what was going on behind the scenes there at Giant. And I think you might get a hint about why the Pop War video never came out based on this stuff. So if Giant had been canceling product lines, they had this all new business model they were trying to work with, maybe doing a skate video just didn't fit in with that. So I don't know, that might be the reason why we never saw that video, but Pop War itself was still out there. They're still doing tours, at least as far as February 2006, but the writing had been on the wall for a little while. I think that in regards to Pop War, we did everything right. We just didn't have the right infrastructure once ownership switched over. I don't know the fine details, but when the distribution was sold, I don't think whoever bought it was told all the facts. It was a complete uphill battle from then on. Everything got basically sabotaged which sucks because it not only affected us, but also companies like Bueno, Excel, and even Stereo at the time. It was just an unfortunate series of events that caused it all to fall apart. If I were to do it again, I'd make sure that I was part of really strong distribution so that same thing wouldn't happen again. Distribution is a huge thing. You have to get that sorted. And so that was it. The new owners behind the distribution didn't really know what to do with the brands and they ended up letting him tank. There was a rumor that they had told both Stereo and Pop War that they had to make the same sales numbers as Element, and when that didn't happen, they canned them. Again, I can't say what happened behind closed doors, but obviously they wouldn't cancel these brands if they were doing as well as they hoped for, so who knows exactly how that went down. But there was always a question if Pop War could ever come back. Unfortunately, I think Pop War was tied directly to Giant Distribution, so it wasn't like any of us could take Pop War out of there and shop it around. It'd be awesome to bring that brand back, but in hindsight, I'm thankful that I had such a rad opportunity to do something with a group of friends. So Pop War could never come back, or could it? Around 2011, Pop War was actually not really brought back, more like a reanimated corpse. You started to see new Pop War decks showing up on Amazon. This listing here was supposedly made around 2011. There was a new Pop War Facebook account. This is four or five years after it had gone out of business. And this account is down now. I couldn't get a lot of screenshots. I found this one though of them in action. So they were definitely out there. They were starting to rebuild. They were starting to sell decks. What was going on? Was this legitimate? Was this Pop War really come back? No, not really. Apparently there was a guy in Utah who owned a skate shop and he just bought the rights to the name and started making new decks. They didn't really last all that long. He didn't have the team behind him. He was apparently just sponsoring local kids from Utah and trying to use the name. It was kind of like he was just making shop decks for his shop, but selling them online as Pop War as well. So I don't know exactly what happened. The thing is, the brand never really caught on again. You didn't see it in major news articles. You just see people talking about it in forums. Apparently he owned a skate shop called Happy Rabbit, and it looked a lot like the Pop War logo. He must have been a really big fan. So what ended up happening, they went out of business almost immediately and never really caught on again. Uh, it's really interesting because on the forums at the time, people had noticed that the Pop War website was not back up. You would think if he bought the rights to Pop War, that he would have gotten the URL and the assets for the website and all that so that he could relaunch it. The fact that he didn't is a little bit questionable. So I could imagine if Giant had just let the URL die and some random person bought it and they were holding it ransom or something, it's possible. But you would think that he would most likely get that URL. So he may have bought the rights, but I have another theory. So I, I know a guy locally, he owns a coin minting company. It's pretty, pretty popular in the coin collecting world. And he went to re-register his company with the state. And while he was there, he decided to check to see if this old Colorado mining company's name was up for grabs because they used to make these really collectible coins way back in the day. And it wasn't. No one had maintained that name over the years. So he registered himself with that name and now he owns that name. 
And so he can make coins legally with the same name as that old mining company because he owns the name. The name died out and he just rebought it. So he didn't deal with the family. He didn't talk to anybody related to the old company. Um, he just registered the name and now it's his. There's a little bit of a difference though. Their designs are all hundreds of years old and out of copyright. He can start remaking them that look exactly the same and no one's gonna come after him. My theory is that that's basically what happened here. I don't know if this is true, but he might have just registered the name Pop War that was up for grabs after a couple of years um, and then maybe got in trouble for using copyrighted uh, graphics and the designs that weren't his. So I don't know if that's how it went down for sure, but that is a theory that I have. So Pop War came back for a little bit, not really, and then it died, and I hope that it stays dead. The thing is, it's a very popular brand um, from the older guys who remember how much they loved it back in the day, but if they can't get the original graphics team, they can't get the original skating team, they can't get Chad Tim Tim and all these guys back together, that it would never really be the same. So hopefully they just let it stay dead and let us have the memories of enjoying that stuff when it was actually out. So that's what I was able to find for Pop War. Right here, YouTube recommends a couple more videos that you can check out. I have a lot of these other brand breakdowns videos and lots of other topics here on the channel. Make sure you tap my logo right here on screen to subscribe so you can keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.